Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be taking you through this treetop village I did and just try to show you how I came about laying down all the color and all the pieces to bring about a finished painting. But first I also want to thank you guys for 1,000 subscribers. I didn't really expect this channel to grow like this. So it's it's really, really awesome. And I want to thank you guys. So enough about that. Let's get started with this. First thing I did is just start out with a simple sketch just to get me pointed in the right direction. And I went in in curves and shifted the canvas towards a blue tint to really help with my colors. And for this, I really don't need to worry about much of the sky because it's not going to show up in the finished painting. Then I went in with a brighter brush and filled in some of the spaces that will be pouring in between the trees. Sampling off my sky color there, or background color, whatever you want to call it. And just darkening it down because these trees are going to be in the distance. You know, these are just going to be sitting against the blue to kind of create some nice contrast. And I'm just quickly going in, trying to get a feel for how I want them to sit in there. And I keep darkening down the bottom of the canvas because although you can't see it, there would be ground down there. Now coming in, darkening it down, adding the closer trees. These are kind of be the mid-ground trees. and a slightly brighter color for the tree that's slightly farther away. And I'm using curves with a quick mask to darken the bottom of the trees. And I'm coming in with a really dark brown color to add the foreground trees. Coming into the background there, trying to figure out how I want those four trees to look. Just organizing my layers a bit. And sometimes it's good to check against your sketch if you have one, just to keep yourself on the right path. The sketch is just a guide, not an exact blueprint of what you're going to do. I'm just coming in with a variation of the brown color and I'm adding some platforms. And you'll notice as I'm painting, I'm using my brush strokes to kind of define the direction of these platforms. I'm just very quickly filling in some rope to kind of tie these wooden platforms up. Cleaning up the edge against the tree. I figured that as the wood was being laid, it would be cleaner towards where the building will be and less taken care of towards the edges. I'm just trying to define some of the lines between each plank. And I'm darkening down the left side using a quick mask and curves. And you can bring up your quick mask with a Q. And I'm going through my brushes and I'm trying to figure out how to add this foliage that I want sitting down here. So to give it some more visual interest rather than just big trees sitting up through. So maybe these trees are really huge and then you have some normal trees down there. I'm just using a, a foliage brush to do this. Really saves quite a bit of time. And you'll notice with these brushes that by adding variations to them and jitters to the controls, you can create a lot of dynamic to each brush stroke. So 
doesn't all look the same. You'll notice if you look at them, there's very little that you could point out and go, oh, this is exactly the same as this portion. Adding some foliage in the distance. Just so, not all these trees are super tall, maybe there's some that don't reach quite so high. And I'm using curves to darken those far trees. Again, organizing my layers. If you have start having a lot of layers, naming them and organizing them is usually a good thing. That way you're not trying to sit through layer one, layer two, and so on. No, just something simple. What is this layer? And now I'm creating the door and the building over here. And I want them to be incorporated into the trees. So maybe whoever or whatever lives here actually lives inside of the tree trunks. And I'm just adding a bit of straw roof. And just trying to quickly add some texture to the top of it. And I'm adding some supports. I'm not really trying to organize them too much, just adding some variation to what's there. I'm coming back into the doorway here. I'm not too interested in what's inside of the buildings because that's not the point of this painting. I'm trying to keep it focused on more of the buildings themselves and what's going on in the forest here. So You'll notice sometimes in video games that windows or doorways, they tend to be really bright. And all you really see is the light coming out of them. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. I'm still using a bit of the brush strokes to define, say, the sidewall as well as where someone would walk in. Just trying to slowly taper off the light towards the edge. Maybe some of that light is pouring out. And I'm just trying to find a nice warm color for it. Because I do want this place to be kind of inviting. And warm colors can kind of help promote that. I'm just adding a little lantern. Just something I like in more fantasy paintings is just lanterns. I'm trying to slowly build up the glowiness to it. Because as it gets towards the edges, the thickness will not necessarily increase, but you're looking through more material so it becomes darker. Just trying to focus the light in the center of it. Taking a look at my sketch again. And I'm adding in the farther platform for now, just to get a rough idea of what I want back there. Just trying to define how everything sits. Adding some even farther trees in the distance taking a different layer and just adding some things farther back. And I'm coming in with a brush and I'm adding some bloom coming through the trees. You don't want to overdo it. Just a little bit to show that there is some light coming through here. It just, you don't want a lot of it, but it also helps kind of cut off the back of the image. 
so it just kind of fades into the distance and I don't have to worry about what's back there so there could be fog or some sort of mist To add some more hanging foliage from above. Just trying to imagine maybe there's some branches that come in through here. Just kind of playing around with it, just quick little things. And if you don't like it, you can just quickly undo it. It's just something really nice about digital is it allows you to experiment really easily. So if you don't like something, you just delete the layer or undo it. And now I'm adding in the tree texture itself. It's kind of similar to how I paint rocks. I'm just coming in with a lighter color and just slowly tapering off the light as it wraps around the trunk. Coming over to the building over here. And as I'm painting the tree trunks, I kind of do a diamond shape of how the strokes sit, just very roughly. And then you layer on top of that the brighter highlights. And coming in just slightly brighter color and just trying to define how light wraps around this brush or this trunk. It won't just suddenly cut off because trees are usually pretty round. Doing the same thing for each trunk. It's a lot of repetition. So once you establish how to do a texture on one piece, if there's a lot of that, you're going to just kind of repeat that. For this trunk, picking a slightly brighter color. And at this point, the trunks are still a little too washed out for me which will be fixed at a later time. And defining the light wrapping around the trunk. And taking a second highlight color for brighter hits. Just to add more variation to it. And then going with levels and darkening it slightly, as well as adding a new adjustment layer of curves and then hiding on that layer and then painting in what I want so adding adjustment layers is just a really nice way to control lighting effects now I'm coming into the pathway over here, the bridge, and I'm doing a similar technique to this where I'm taking a darker color and I'm just laying my strokes down vertically. Because natural wood does have a lot of shifts in it, it's usually not like your hardwood, hardwood floors that are very clean and flat especially worn wood. It tends to warp and distort after a while. And as I'm slowly getting closer to the doorway, I'm adding in some brighter hits that would be coming from that building. So I'm taking that orange and just trying to layer it on top. And adding some darker and taking that orange and just adding the highlights and as it gets closer it gets warmer and more defined
Again, it's just a lot of repetition. And adding that poster, another one will stay a phantom post for a little bit. Just because I didn't feel like dealing with it at this point. And I'm trying to find a color for the rope. And it just really wasn't working for me. I'm trying to go back over it. It was just really messy and didn't look good. Even painting on top of it with a darker color. You'll see that there, there is quite a bit of messy edge. And rope generally has a twist pattern to it as it's coiled around each other. Going in the other side there. And I, I just didn't really know how to get that pattern there with normal painting. As it would have been just a really, really slow process. So I went and I made a new document, 500 by 500. And I'm just trying to define a spiral pattern here. And then just take those two strokes define that as a rope and then adjust it and you'll see just very quickly it creates a nice spiral pattern you can just kind of go over there and add some variation to the color just trying to define how I want this to go through Just adding the connections to the wood planks. And I'm creating a little loop because the rope would be not one piece, it would be another piece kind of hanging down and supporting those boards. So it comes up and wraps around and ties itself onto the main rope. I'm trying to adjust the color of it, adding a little bit of highlight to the top. Maybe the rope's kind of matte, so it's not picking up very much light. Again, darkening down the left side using curves and quick masks. I'm coming in and Adding that second post. Try to copy the same look as the first one. With the light coming off the main building there. And something kind of nice of how this was painted was the edge towards the bridge there. It's already kind of worn looking, which worked out really nicely. You know, sometimes you get happy little things that come out of quickly painting something down. Here I'm just trying to redefine the circle because it didn't fit very well. And as I'm adding each of these new boards in, I'm trying to leave the edges messy to try to keep some consistency. And I'm rotating it just to kind of give myself easier access to the way I want to paint this, which is in vertical strokes. And it makes it a lot easier on your hand. setting in some dark and light just to define the variations in wood. It's 
It's also kind of similar to how you paint rock. Getting some bright hits coming off the building there. As well as some darker cracks in the wood. Adding some highlights to the posts there. And I wasn't really happy with how the yellow was sitting on the building from the light. So I just toned it down slightly. Added another adjustment layer to help define the top and bottom and really just help bring the light coming in through the middle because the tops would be covered in canopy from the trees and the bottom is all the foliage and brush. And it really helps focus your eye towards the center of the painting. And just something to keep in mind is if you are using adjustment layers, you do want to generally turn them off when you are painting. Because every time you sample off an adjustment layer, you're going to take that adjusted sample I'm adding in just a little window up there. So maybe the buildings that you see on these trees aren't all that's there. Maybe there's other stories inside of the trees. And occasionally there's a window. I didn't really like the big solid open window. It's just adding little smaller ones. And it really helps sell the scale because the bigger one just kind of looked weird. trying to find the light. Just using that one glow layer to layer on lighting effects. I'm coming into the pathway here and you'll notice that I'm, as I'm painting like I did with the other wooden sections, I'm painting in the direction I want the planks to show up. And I've said this a lot of times but the direction you paint in is a really good way to define a texture and it helps save you time and effort. So even if it's you're just doing a quick sketch of something, just keeping that in mind can really help bring out a texture even if you didn't put a whole ton of work into it. Just trying to add a similar roof to how I did in the foreground. trying to sample off and find a nice variation in the roof color. And the light will be wrapping around the tree and hitting that side of the building because it is a round object that the building is kind of encompassed into. You have to kind of deal with that variation and how the light hits things. Getting a little window and door. Just doing the same thing I've been doing. I'm slowly building up the brightness of the object. And then I go into my glow layer and add a, a subtle glow to that. It doesn't have to be anything heavy, just enough to show that there is light coming out of here. That second building sitting at the other way there, I just had a little bit of light streaming out of it. I 
I'm going in and adding the light hits to the wood, similar to how I did it in the foreground. Going in with curves and a quick mask, just to kind of help define the side that reaches around the tree where it gets darker. I felt that there was a little bit too much emptiness between the trees and everything else. And so I decided to add these ropes going through the canvas to help break things up and add some visual interest to things. And I thought maybe these are ropes that help hold up the buildings or other things. And they just really help add a little bit of variety to what I'm working on and break up these spaces that are just kind of big otherwise. Going in and adding some little lights to trees that are further away. I'm coming in and adding this main building here which was kind of be to be the focal point of the piece because I realized that without something there, there really wasn't any focus to the painting. I wanted this big oriental type kind of pavilion. And this was something that I really wasn't happy with at the start, but sometimes you just need to stick with something and it'll turn out good in the end. A lot of times if you just keep kind of working at something that you're not happy with, you may be able to turn it around. I'm just trying to define the underside because with the perspective the horizon line did fall below where that roof was. So you'd be able to see a little bit underneath it. And I'm trying to darken down how the roof affects the light. Taking a look at things. Sometimes it's good to just sit back and look at what you have. I'm just adding some little dust elements and blurring them slightly. They're not really noticeable. It's just a, another layer of texturing. I'm coming in and I'm adding just a little tip of a roof poking out from the bottom there where that, that pathway is kind of scaling down towards the tree on the right. Adding another curves layer to help adjust the lighting on the pathway. I'm just clipping that inside of the previous layer. Going back to the roof, I'm just quickly painting in little strokes across in the direction of the roof because I, I wanted to define these little tiles without painting every single individual tile. That would have just been very time consuming. So you can just kind of paint in general textures. It might not be perfect, but altogether it gets the idea across of what you want. And setting in those little bright hits, just quick little strokes to define tiles. And I'm adding this big doorway there. Two tall windows. 
Or maybe this is some sort of special building. Maybe the leader lives here or it's where they hold get togethers. So I just wanted this big festive looking building. Painting in the doorway there with the light coming out. And you'll notice as I go, it just slowly builds up that lightness. So there's variation to it. Adding in supports similar to how I did it in the foreground. Going a little bit whimsical with it, adding just kind of these supports sticking out. Adding the light coming out of the windows and doors. I was trying to define the main entrance there because it does stick out from the tree a bit. Setting this wood pattern. Sampling off the other planks to do the same thing over here. Just the light pouring out of the spaces there. I want some more lanterns hanging down. Hanging off various places. And at this distance, I don't have to worry too much about detail with them. Just add a little bit of lightness to the center and then add the overglow. that glow layer that I'm using for pretty much all the lights is just a single layer set to linear dodge. You might not always just want it on one layer, but in this case there wasn't a lot that I would need it for. I'm starting to just add some cold tips to the roof there. Just some ornamentation to help make it stand out from the rest of the buildings. And I'm just adding little vertical strokes now to help sell the idea that there's tile. There we go. Adding in some more of those ropes, this time kind of hanging down and helping to hold up that roof. And at this point, I felt that I can make curve adjustments to the actual layer. So I went in there and did that to the tree and darkened where it sits on with the building. And I'm I'm coming in now and I duplicated the the buildings layer and I set the bottom one to have a color overlay and then you set the second layer to screen at a layer mask and then you basically paint on the highlights and this can help you either relight a piece or really help with how light hits something I did this a lot in my matte painting walkthrough where I would duplicate the layers to help establish lighting for the landscape. I'm just using curves and quick masks to adjust the lightness of the trees. 
in and adding some rope to the drawbridge and maybe one of the ropes broke off and it's just kind of hanging down there now. I decided not to add railings to all the wood. These people just like to live dangerously. So if you take a misstep, well that's it's a long way down. And I wanted to add some more windows to the trees. And I was trying to figure out how to do that. I had an idea of adding like a knot in the wood. Not sure if that's the word for it, but the holes in the wood. And just adding little tiny windows. So to help establish extra rooms in these trees. Doing it to each one. And you'll see I'm just very quickly adding in some color and then adding that glow on top. And it just helps set, set the illusion that there's some light pouring out of these holes. Coming back to my background plate where the color is, and I'm just adjusting it some more, where it falls into the distance and gets darker. And I'm adding adjustment layers, levels, and some curves just to help define that the light coming through is through the center. a third curves layer. And this is just a little bit of bloom coming around the side. You don't really don't want to overdo this. Just going through and checking things. And I'm adding some extra lights to the background there. And I'm also adding some objects hanging down. So maybe this, this bucket is how they get water from ground level or just some things hanging off. The last thing is adding a few little visual elements to the rope. So maybe the ones going between trees are a little bit different. Maybe those are just for decoration rather than holding things up. So just just by doing that with little flags and and lanterns helps add some character to how this place exists. Just going in with the glow. And taking one last look at things. And that'll do it for this tutorial. Like, favorite, subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.